Hey there, band directors. It's Dwayne Huff with Band Leadership Seminars, Band Leadership Online, going live to answer a band director question that came in. And so whether you're watching this on the replay um, or watching it live, say hello, uh, drop your comments, your questions, your suggestions, and your ideas for this band director because this is my opinion, my perspective, and I'm sure that your colleague would love to hear your thought and your take on this topic. But the question is, how do we get kids how do we get the kids in the band to appreciate each other? And so I'm going to unpack that. As you can see right here, i got a couple notes. Before I forget, the run over to bandleadershipseminars.com, especially if you're not familiar with my work. There's a free resource there for you um, and your students. If you're trying to train and develop uh, your new student leaders, your returning student leaders, your aspiring student leaders, and build team amongst the entire band, in time for marching band season, the band leadership online, I'm sorry, the band leadership mini course is free. And uh, you just go to the website, bandleadershipseminars.com. There's a red link. Click it. Sign up for it. Eight videos and counting uh, to train and develop your leaders. And um, one for you that's called How to Teach Your Students Leadership. I lay out my entire process that I do in my live events and in my online course. Just give it to you. You take it. You use it. You apply it to your leaders. You get great results. Everybody's happy. Right. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a nine time student leader, six time drum major in the marching band. Um, and so I've never been an educator. I honor you for everything that you do, but I'm here to commit and serve you. And these questions that I get come from um, uh, I have a band. Uh, you can, and you're welcome to request access. It's free of charge. Band Leadership Inner Circle. If you put that in the search right there, Band Leadership Inner Circle and request membership, it's free. It'll ask you three questions, and that's where these questions come from. What's your biggest challenge? Um, what would you like to, your students to know or focus on? And there's a third one. I forget what it is. But this one came in from band director, as you can see, in the comments here. How do we get kids to appreciate each other? So I want to unpack that. Now, typically what happens is bands that are successful, small, medium, and large, competitive or not, that are, that are getting it done and really committed to investing in their programs like they bring clinicians in uh, to work their bands and their sections and you know, all the different aspects, you know, they're committed on that level and they maybe go out and see people like Dr. Tim or, or me when they come down or, or work with us. Those, those are the types of bands that reach out to me and they say, Dwayne, you know, um, for example, this question right here, how do we get the kids to appreciate each other? Here's what I would share. Again, if you're a band director and you have specific experience in this and you want to share, drop in the comments, leave a comment. I'll appreciate it. I'll learn from you. And so we're calling and, and let me say this before I jump in here. Because I'm going to answer this question and show you a couple of key things that you can do in real time. Uh, I just went and had my eyes examined. I had an eye appointment earlier today. So if I'm squinting or anything like that, it's that's what's going on. Uh, my eyes are still a little bit dilated. And I get these bright lights <laughs> right here. And hopefully, excuse me, hopefully the sound is really good. But if I squint, please forgive me. I don't like to wear my glasses. And I think in this particular situation, it would probably do more harm than good. But if I see a question or a comment, please say hello if you're here. Uh, and, and I'll say hello. I'll, I'll put my glasses on. But by the way, like the page if you haven't already because you'll see when I go live, right? Um, but let's, let's jump in without further ado. How do we get kids to appreciate each other? And you know this from your own life if you look at it. It's really hard to appreciate somebody we don't know, like, trust, or at least know, and maybe trust to some level, like. So we have to facilitate that happening for these kids, especially realizing that it's a social media driven world. And in some cases, the only way they interact and respond to each other, build relationships is virtually text groups, uh, Instagram, the social media platform of choice at the time. It's how they engage it's how they interact. And to, to have a real conversation uh, many times, I mean, I have a 13 year old son and when, and, and I have a, uh, 10 year old son, nine year old son, about to be 10. And when they have their friends over, yeah, they interact on some level, but you've seen it. They're sitting on the couch next to each other, on the floor next to each other, playing games together, maybe talking a little bit to each other, but that's how they're interacting. And if they do, it's online. So how do we get them to appreciate each other when we can't get them to, to talk to each other? And how do we get them to talk to each other? Because you know, as well as I do, that this is going to be huge for people who, uh, for any band program where you're trying to conduct rehearsals, sorry, every band program, conduct rehearsals, get the kids to work together, collaborate, be a strong team. It starts with the foundation. So how do we get to appreciate each other? So i got three things, and I want to share them with you, three things that you can do right now. This is what I do in my programs. These are the um, three key 
umbrellas that we hang out in for if for those of you who don't know I come out to schools like your school uh, if you want to work with me by the way this is a great time to do it after you've seen so many things that you want to um, uh, there's there's another website you can go to two day clinic the number two D A Y clinic I'm actually uh, for a limited time I'm, I'm doing two day clinics for the same price I do one so if that's you two day clinic.com the number two D A Y clinic dot com and this is what I do in my programs. We focus on three things. I'm going to lay them out for you real quick. I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to give you a fun activity that will facilitate you doing it right now. And I want you to go to try this with your students. They're going to have an absolute blast. You're going to see the walls come down. You're going to see uh, the bonds and the relationships form. And the more they know, like, and trust each other, the more time they spend together in conversations and activities of that nature, the stronger it's going to become. And they will really start to value and appreciate their similarities, their differences, their unique abilities, and the thing that each of them bring to the equation. So I think you're really gonna enjoy this. I do this when I do the live events. I do this in my online program, the, not the free one, but the, the one that, that, that's an investment. But anyway, I digress, watch this. Three things, number one. Connection. Getting students to actually connect with each other, as I alluded to earlier, is one of the biggest challenges, especially face-to-face, -face, especially with strangers or people that they're not comfortable with, they don't know, like, and trust, yet we, we tend to hesitate and shy away from things that are outside of our comfort zone, especially as teenagers, and if there seems to be a threat or potential threat or rejection, they're going to do that as well. So connecting is the first thing that we've got to get them to do. The second thing is at, actually... As they um, have connected with each other, and I'm gonna show you how to do that specifically in, in an example, I'm gonna give you an activity that you can play with them. The second thing we have to do, and I was watching Dr. Tim the other day, and he says, con uh, he says, communication is the game. Communication is everything. And he's absolutely right. That's why in my live events, we spend a good deal of time teaching these students how to communicate effectively. So obviously, the second one is communication. If you will forgive my handwriting, <laughs> if you'll forgive my handwriting, and then finally collaboration. I'm going to share with you how to do all three here uh, so that you can take this to your students. But connection, communication, and collaboration, it's important not only to tell students that, hey, you need to learn how to communicate with each other. You have to show them what that looks like. Again, run over to bandleadershipseminars.com and pick up that free uh uh, mini course, band leadership mini course that I put together. The very first video establishes how to communicate effectively. I talk about how they're wired, how their peers are wired, how to make these connections, how to communicate effectively with different behavioral styles. If you've ever taken the DISC assessment, this is a fun spin on that. Your students are going to love it. And I talk about some of the principles of communication and how good and effective communication and advanced communication happens. And we do it in a fun way. The students absolutely love it. Check it out. BandLeadershipSeminars.com. On the homepage, there's a red link that you can get that free mini course. Take it. Eight videos in there. You'll see all the details. <laughs> anyway, so, so connection, communication, and then collaboration. You have to put them in an environment, number one, where they can connect. They understand how to communicate effectively because you know how it is. Sometimes they feel very awkward. They try to start a conversation. They try to, you know, they'll go up to somebody they understand and say, hey, how's your day going? And the person will go, fine. <laughs> hey, you want to come hang out with us? Uh-uh. <laughs> hey, we're going to get pizza. You want to join us? No. I'm <laughs> so and they try, but then the conversation shuts down. How do, we, how do we facilitate that conversation in a better way, right? And then once they're communicating, we have to get them in a position where they're actually working together and collaborating. In my live events uh, and in the band leadership online course, we uh, I play a game where I put them in a scenario where they think they're in a competition and they're competitive by nature. And the whole gist of the game as they go through it is to realize that they're all part of one team. And at any point, they're competing against each other in the context of that team, as opposed to you know fun games and competitions and things like that. If they're competing each other, it erodes the effectiveness and everybody loses and they're not strong enough to fight the outside competition, which is other bands, right? That competition or whatever uh, is up, right? So collaboration becomes absolutely key. So find a way to put them in a game where they absolutely must collaborate or they cannot win, right? Um, but anyway, let me give you a couple of uh, ideas about how to do this. Number one, connection, how to make a connection. 
right? So I'm gonna give you a game that you can play with your students. I call it In Common, okay? Because the whole goal of the game is to facilitate a, a discussion that's going to lower walls in a very non-threatening way, a fun way, an interactive way, a humorous way, an easy way to get them uh, connecting with each other and establishing what some of their common bonds are. It's really easy to like somebody when you think in your mind, hey, they're just like me, right? And, and if they're thinking, I don't know this person, they're not like me, they don't do what I do, they don't know what I know, they don't like what I like, they've already got that, they've already got that emotional teenager thing going on, like, I don't want to mess with it, you know? And so you got to facilitate this. How do we do it? Here's the game. Um, put your entire band in small groups, three to five people. I generally do five if you have enough to get away with it. Um, and we do, uh, we do 300 people events whenever I come and we put them in groups of five all over the place, right? Because five is just the right size. Three is a good size, too. I like to stretch it to five. But here's what you're going to do. Um, take five students. What I do is I like to line them up. And I say, hey, everybody jump up and line up in the order of your birthday without saying a word. And that's a whole different teacher, a whole different time. But they scatter. You don't have to do it that way. Just line them up. And then count them off. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, I'm sorry. Depending on how many groups you're going to have. Like if you had five groups, you say one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, have them number off and say one's over here, two's over here, three's over here, four's over here, five's over here. Whatever way you got to break it down so you end up with five people in a group or three people in a group or four, it doesn't matter, right? Somewhere between three and five. And so what I'll do is I'll sit them down in a circle facing each other, right? And then groups around the room. So there's multiple groups going on. Sorry, there's multiple groups going on at the same time. And let's just pretend there's a whole bunch of groups going around the room, right? Let's pretend there's a whole bunch of groups going around the room. I repeat that because I was facing that way and I uh, want to make sure you heard it. And so here's what I tell them. I'll put maybe a 10 minute, 15 minute if it's going real well. I don't really tell them how much time we're going to do it. All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something called In Common. It's a game. It's fun. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Maybe set a timer for 10 minutes. And then if you see that it's going well, you can let it go a little bit longer, 10 minutes. But they feel a sense of urgency and time, so they don't waste time, right? Uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You know your kids better than I do, right? And so, and so say, here's all I'm going to ask you to do in this 10 to 15 minute window. I want you to make a connection with each person in your group. That's three things. It meets three criteria. It's unique. It's surprising. And it's interesting, unique, surprising, and interesting. Now, I'm going to take some things off the table is what I tell them, and you can tell them too. You cannot say we're both in band. You cannot say, you know all the crazy stuff teenagers are going to say, right? You cannot say we play the same instrument. You cannot say we're not in the same section. Well, you can't say that we uh, are both in sports unless it's something that they don't know. It, the common things you take off there, we both like to hunt. We both love to fish. We love sports. All those generic things. No, I want you to press and it, let it be unique. Surprising and interesting. If you don't look at each other and go, wow, I didn't know that. Or if you, if you at least don't go, wow, that's, that's interesting, that's fascinating. Then you need to push deeper. And the unique comes to this. Person one has to establish a unique connection with person three. Unique being different than the connection they have with person four, different than the connection they have with two, different than they have the one with five. So it has to be unique. So there can't be common connections. I can't, number one, can't establish the same connection with these two people. It has to be something unique or different, right? Um, then every person has to do the same thing. Five has to connect with one, 
four, three, and two, something completely different. Every person has to make a connection with each person, right? So I hope that that makes sense. At the end of the day, every single person in that circle has to have a unique, interesting, and surprising connection with each other person in that circle. Make sense? Okay. So I don't tell them anything else. I don't tell them how to do it. I don't tell them how to approach it. Now that I think about it, you might want to put a 15 to 20 minute timer on that thing. I can't remember how we do them live. We do them in the moment, right? And they, they generally go about 20 minutes, right? Don't squelch it. Don't stop it. Hover. Pay attention. And the com you're not going to believe this until you do it. The conversations that come out of this, the connection, the bond, the relationships, the respect, and the appreciation, as this band director had asked, begins to develop. Because now they see people just like them. They have things in common. They understand their interest in the walls have come down. Nobody's been threatened. Nobody's in a, a discomfort zone. Here's why. Because those conversations develop organically. Uh, and they approach them many different ways. You, you'll see people in the group that'll say, okay, guys, let's talk about some of the things we like. Or somebody will lead and say, hey, here's some of the things I do. Here's the same thing. And somebody, oh, me too, bye-bye. Let the conversation happen. They, they approach it so many different ways. And then debrief and go around and ask them first, how did you guys make the conversation? Or in the group, how did y'all approach this? Okay, group two, how did y'all approach this? Okay, group three, how did you approach it? Okay, so let's start out with Tommy. Tommy, talk to me. Tell me about the connections you have with each person in your group, starting with that person. Or tell me about one of the interesting connections. Interesting, surprising, and unique. And if it's not surprising and interesting, I'm going I'm, I'm to ask you to do it again, right? And if you really impressed upon them what that looks like up front, you won't have that problem, okay? They're still going to say st silly stuff. They're teenagers, right? But roll with it. And what you're going to see is going to absolutely give you tons of insight into your kids, where your leaders step up, where the shy ones are. You're going to see shy ones come out of their shell. You're going to see people who have never talked before walk out good friends. And they're going to learn how to appreciate each other because of this connection. Okay? So put them in that activity. Roll through this and debrief it by going through and letting them share. And believe me, they're going to want to share. This is not something you're going to have to pull out of them. This is something, oh, let me tell you about mine. Oh, let me tell you about mine. Oh, let me tell you about that. And people are going to laugh. They're going to have a great time. The people on the other side of the room are going to be like, oh, my God, that's me too. Right? So play this game with them. So connection, how? Play this game with them, unique, surprising, and interesting. Set a timer on it. Debrief it. Listen to their stories. And give yourself ample time to do this because this is not something. If you're trying to create an appreciation for the kids, have an appreciation for each other, you don't, you don't want to rush this. You know, I mean, I, I'd honestly, I'd block out an hour for it because you never know what's going to go. And it's a good conversation to have. Now, how do you do this? Get them to connect through this right here. They will begin to communicate with each other and the walls of communication will open up. And then listen to what they say about how they approach it. And if there's anything you can guide and lead, hey guys, that was a great job of doing that. Like the way you approach this. Hey, just remember next time, do this as well. And then at the end, say, hey, what were some of the more fascinating uh, approaches and connections and things that you heard? What did you like about the way they approached it? And establish common practices and best practices for good connection, communication, and collaboration, right? And so what you're going to see is this collaboration starts to form as you do this, but then find a fun game that you can put them in where, again, they have to collaborate. And if they don't, everybody loses. I'm just Googling. I'm sure you'll find, you know, uh, leadership games from DECA and all the other student organizations. If you don't already have uh, a backlog of that, now, if I can be any service, please let me know. Before we leave here, run over to bandleadershipseminars.com for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's a free gift there for you. Um, uh, free band leadership mini course. If you're not familiar with my work, go check it out. It's a free resource. I want to serve your band. I know I can't get to everybody, but I can serve you uh, through that. Number two, um, if you're ready to work with me live or virtually, run over to band leader. I'm sorry. Two day clinic, the number two DAY clinic. I'll leave it in the comments uh, after we're finished here or leave it in the uh, notes after we're finished here. And oh, by the way, if you decide this is our time, Dwayne, we've been following you for a little while or we just started following you. We love your stuff. We love the online course. We'd like to work with you at a deeper level. The online course um, is there. 
and there's so many different options uh, starting at just 47 bucks a month okay all right and uh, going all the way up to 500 for lifetime access anyway uh, the other thing is is if you're ready to work with me live reach out to me tell me you saw this video I will give you $500 off the investment to bring me in go over to todayclinic.com number two dayclinic.com um, and I will give you $500 worth of value if you work with me live this year I will give you the band leadership online course free for a year that's a 500 well free for life lifetime access $500 value plus the $500 off if you want to work with me live I've got some time in J June July is booked August is starting to fill up August September even October to get them through that mid-semester slump tons of options to meet every budget but apply this Go play this activity with your kids. Watch them open up. Watch them communicate, connect, collaborate, and watch the relationships that aren't even there yet form and watch the appreciation that you see these kids develop for each other. And I think by the time, I know, by the time you get to uh, band camp and marching band season, you're going to have a tight little family there. And it's all going to start with the connection, the, the communication, the collaboration. So remember, you can teach your students how to inspire superior performance. You just got to have the right tools in place. Go through them. And bring them through, and there's a free resource over bandleadershipseminars.com, free mini course. Grab it, and if you and I can work together this year, I'd love to do that. Let's have a conversation, and uh, stay tuned. If you haven't liked this page, like it. If you think this would serve another band director, please share this with them. And uh, if you loved it, give a heart or a, a wow, so I'll know that I served you at the highest level. And if you're a band director, comments, questions, uh, help your fellow colleagues out. If there's something you do to help the students appreciate each other, we want to know. Have a great day, guys. Have a great evening. Talk soon. Bye-bye.